And you are also doing that for Facebook? No, just no. uh mm -hmm. just LinkedIn. Hello everyone, welcome. Welcome to my interview with Octavio Aguila. You are talking uh with Rudy Rivera and Octavio. We're interviewing Octavio on my conversations with Rudy Rivera channel on Make It Simple. Octavio is a good friend of mine in Mexico who wrote a book in Spanish. It's Aslo Sencillo. In English, it's Make It Simple. And his book is debuted in the United States on Kindle. You can get it on Kindle. Octavio, welcome. Uh, you've got quite an illustrious career. <laughs> Thank you very much, Rudy. Nice to see you and nice to be with you today. Nice to see you and nice to be with you. Thank you for uh, agreeing to do this. I'm happy to talk about your book. Uh, uh, Octavio, tell us a little bit about you. What? How did this idea come up and make it simple? Because it really seems so simple. Well, it began uh, like 30 years ago for me. Right. When I decided that a lot of things that I was trying to do, there uh, when I when to analyze it and say, why, why do I have to do this or that or that e e even in work and in my personal life? So I decided to, to start studying how to simplify everything. So I started a, uh, in my company, simplifying processes. So how, do, how can we do it? How can we do what we do? Uh, even easier than what or simple than what we were doing. And I discovered that we can do a lot of things simple, simpler than what we were doing. So uh, thinking on the customer. Then I decided to, to wrote it to my life, personal life. And I decided, well, for example, not to use tie, not to use watches, not to use expensive pens. Uh, I, I know that a lot of people will say, well, that's not uh, very important, but that Start simplifying your life. How how do you how do I dress? Instead of uh, buying different kind of clothing every time, so I decided to, to buy the same shirt in different colors, but the same shirt, uh, the same pants, the same shoes, and I started simplifying my life. And um, in my relations, to be very clear with the people, not not being around the trees, you know, the branches of the tree just talking straight to the people. So that's why I say, make it simple is uh, simplifying everything for everyone. That's well, it. but that's, that's really good, except that it's one of those things where it's so obvious. It's extremely obvious where, okay, why didn't I think of that? I, I seem to think that we have a tendency to Com to complicate life yes in, in especially in the world of lawyers you know what i see is that many lawyers tend to make things very complicated it's really very very simple i always say the first case starts with the first story right what are you going to tell the story and you build your case around there so in your situation you're really the end person is the customer right yes. that's who you have to impress because you are coaching people who are Customers, potential sources of revenue, right? Exactly, but it's the same case for a lawyer. Someone, someone is paying you, so you have to simplify the thing for your customer. Say, well, this is the three or four alternatives we have, and this is the one I recommend as an expert. That's simplifying. You can tell, you can tell him or her, whoever uh, hire you or the company that hire you. They say, well. Uh, this is the shortest way, but we have to do this and that. This is the longest way, and we have to do this and that. But you have to be very clear at the very beginning of the process. Well, I think that, so people understand, you know, they think you're a non-lawyer giving advice to lawyers. At one time, you supervised the whole legal department. Yeah, well, when I was at, at Pemex, I was a, the, the VP of administration, and I have under my... Uh, job, my position, over 600 lawyers. So I work with a lot of them in many different areas because Pemex has all, all, all the areas 
So we have uh, lawsuits, I mean, big ones from the, uh, hundreds of millions uh, to la labor problems. And um, in, in my, I, 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 a lot of people think that I am a lawyer because I study industrial relations. Uh, so I have a lot of uh, courses in, in, in law. Um, probably that was the second, the second choice of myself when I was studying, to be a lawyer. Probably I should, I should have done that. I, I think you, um, it's probably a good thing you didn't, okay? <laughs> <laughs> because people welcome you because you're going to make them money. Lawyers, you know, say, you're, you're only going to, you're only going to cost me money, right? <laughs> uh, that's what they say to lawyers. So tell well, me. Everybody thinks that. I just went to, to my dentist today in the morning and he said, well, I don't, I don't know if you are a good customer or a bad customer or patient. Why, is, why do you say so? Because before you, you were coming in, I look, I look at your, uh, uh, how do you call that? Uh, the, the, the reports that, that he has to make when I, I visit yeah. him. And he said, you have been here with me for 21 years. And in the last, the last 19 years, you, has, you have just come two times a year just to, to make the cleaning. So you are not a very good customer for me. <laughs> so uh, you are a very good patient because just just you do what I tell you to do. So you have uh, deep problems, but in in the other in the other sense, well, you are not very good customer for me. Right, because you he wants to do the complete replacement of the teeth, the fillings, <laughs> and everything. Yeah, so you're you're very you're very you're very low maintenance. Yes. Uh, well, you know, Octavio, I've read your book, and Thank what I've read. noticed about your book that I don't notice, well, that I don't see with others, there are a lot of literally thousands of self-help books out there. I mean, thousands. But yours is actually more of a workbook than anything else. I mean, it's 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 like a it's a lesson plan for life, is what it seems like. Was that your intent when you wrote the book? Yes, yes, it was, Rory. When I decided, uh, how how does the idea of the book came from? Uh, a lot of people ask me, well, I, I want to go to your seminars or I want to go to, to uh, one of your lectures. Then the people say, well, it's too expensive. I said, well, what I'm gonna do is give what I'm giving in my lectures or in my, even in my workshops, I'm gonna put it in my book. So I did a book that is actually a handbook, or a manual, so that people can use it even without listening to what I say. Um, and I'm not afraid of that because I love the subject I, I do, I, I give um, accountability. So I decided to, why don't I make it accessible to everyone? So I hire three uh, young women that I'm 64, they are 30 something, and say, well, how? Would you like to receive this information? So I gave them the, the, the workshop and they decided how to design the book. And this is what we have. So it is a, a very easy to, to use book. Uh, this is in Spanish, but uh, the, the book already. And as, and as you were saying, there is a lot of graphics and you can do all the exercises within the book. So it's, it's a book to write to use it, not just to read it. But you can plan your life here, as you were saying, Rudy. and that was the intention. Well, I, 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 I really like the format, but I, I agree with your philosophy on make it free. In other words, not free, but let them buy the book rather than paying you for the course, because I think the more you get out there, the more people are interested in it, and those who want to learn more will want to learn more. Okay. Yeah. So I think it's from a business point of view, I think it's a wise decision. Okay. Because then what you're doing is throwing it into the fray. In other words, just throwing it out there and people who want to learn more can do more. And I think that's, that's, uh, that's great. In the case of the U S it's $11. So we, we even try to, to make an, a special price 
in the English version because there is a lot of competition. There are four or five other books on accountability. Uh, it's not very humble to say that obviously my, mine is the best. Um, well, of course, of course. <laughs> I, have, I have read the other ones. So the other, the other authors cannot say anything about my book because probably they haven't read it. But I have read the other four. Yes. Uh, so I have a, a point on that because I even teach in, in two of those books that are on the market. So, well, tell us what accountability is. What are the four? You talk about four concepts of accountability. Let's go through them. What's the first one? Planning. If you don't know where to go, you cannot be accountable. Or what to achieve, you, you cannot be accountable or something. So the first one is planning. Uh, you have to know where to go. What do you want to achieve? Well, some people would interpret that to mean goal setting, right? Planning is yeah. the same thing as goal setting. You want to yeah, set well, your goal. The most you, important thing. Planning? Is that part of the planning? Yeah. The most important part of planning is goal setting. Okay. And now, so you have your plan. Yes. Right? Then execute. That's the second one. And the most important one, at least in my experience in accountability, you will spend most of the of, of your life, or working life, even personal life, uh, executing. You have a plan, then you have to execute it. So that's the second one. The third uh, part is evaluation. So we have this plan, we are executing what is happening. So we have to evaluate. And in evaluation, I recommend two things. To evaluate as much as you can, and as, as shorter the time, the, the, the better. If you evaluate every day, you won't have, you, you will lost, uh, you will want lost a lot of opportunities. If you evaluate every six months, you will lose five months. If you evaluate every three months or every four months, you will lose three months. If you evaluate every three months, you will lose two months. If you evaluate every month, you will lose three weeks. So I said, evaluate, evaluate, evaluate as much as you can and make a very simple way to evaluate. Um, when Balance Scorecard came to, 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 the, to, management, to the management organization, I said, this is BS. It's, it's, an, it's crazy to, to have Balance Scorecard. And I don't know any company today that are still using it because it was so complicated that uh, it wasn't necessary. Use a, like, like a red light in, on, the, on, the, on the traffic, a traffic light. So you have green if you are doing well, yellow if you are doing all right, okay, on the budget, and um, red if you are doing it uh, under the budget. And that's it. Don't get, don't complicate the things. Well, when I look at evaluation, my perception of it, Octavio, is that at the end of the day, you, 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 because I talk about this in other talks, you have to look at what did you do to in furtherance of that goal. That's what I took evaluation to mean in your book. Yeah. You, you look at it. What did I do today to get closer to the goal? I, I equate this to say somebody who weighs 600 pounds and they want to lose weight. And all they think about is, I want to lose a 600 pounds. Yeah. But if they think about, what am I going to do today to get to that goal? Then every day is an evaluation. Every and day is, right? What did I do today? Yeah, of course. And what do, you, what do you have to do next morning? Exactly. And really get up in the morning and think, well, I have to do this today. And, and go to the to the weight uh, to to check your weight. Not to uh, I will see in one week. No, no, no. Check it every day. And of course, you will say, "Well, what I ate yesterday didn't help. I have to do more, or or or, or I'm doing okay." But if you wait until Sunday or Saturday to, to wait yourself, you will lose five or six days of opportunity of changing your diet or what you are doing to reduce your, your weight. 
And, and you know, the reason I think that's important is because it's so easy for other things to detract you from it. Yeah. A, a, a friend of mine, I learned this expression from her. She was an attorney in Argentina and also an attorney in the United States. She says, I often postpone the important for the urgent because not everything that's urgent is important. Mm -hmm. And so that was her expression. You know, when I couldn't get the thing, I always left it. And so I think the evaluation is really something good to do every day rather than, you know, wait a year. Um, what, what's the third concept? No, the third concept is evaluation. So okay. planning, execution, evaluation. And the fourth one is recognition. You're going to have to explain that because, you know, when you look at, re when, I, when you talk about recognition, um, you're talking about re being recognized by other people or being recognized you recognizing yourself? Both. If you are losing your way, then you are doing well. What, what can you do? Well, you say something interesting in your book about um, there are certain times of the year, maybe uh -huh. 70, I think is the number, where yeah. you're recognized because of events. It's your birthday, your anniversary, but recognition at any other time is something you have to earn. Well, you have to earn, and if you work in a company, uh, you can be recognized for a lot of things that a lot of companies don't do that. It's, it's like in baseball, Rudy. I, I love baseball. So if you, go, if you get to first base, should the people uh, applaud you, uh, applaud you, uh, cheer you? And the people say, no, you are, not, you are not making a run or whatever. No, but when you evaluate what you have done, you have achieved a lot because a very good ball player gets onto the first base every four times from 10 times that he goes to the home plate. A regular, a regular baseball player just goes two. So you have already achieved a lot being on first, first uh, base. So that's why the people cheers you because they know that you have achieved a lot. And I think on board, uh, when, you, when, you, when we work in a company, the, your boss or your leader can uh, recognize a lot of things that you have done, not, not even if you haven't achieved the last uh, objective that you are looking for. But if you are on the track, it's important that you receive that motivation and recognition. You are doing well, keep doing that. Well, I'd like to explore that further with you because I've talked to people who say, I want to be recognized for my job. I want to be recognized for my work. And what I say to them is your paycheck is recognition for your work yeah. because you do the work, you get paid. If you're not doing the work, you either don't get paid or you get terminated, right? Yeah. So what they're what what you what I say to people is when I give sometimes give similar talks to you is you have to go above and beyond your job to get the recognition. Just doing your job is not sufficient, right, for the recognition. So, I, and that's what I got from your book is you want to be recognized, you have to just do more than just what you're, what's required of you in the workplace. Yeah, and the people who is uh, accountable do that. They will always do an extra mile. The, a person who is accountable will never say, this is not my job. I or have actually asked. seen people get fired, really, because, for example, there's a changeover in personnel, yeah. and they give they say to one person, well, we're going to give you these duties. We're going to divide this person's duties uh, with, say, three or four other people. And this person says, well, I'm not doing it unless you pay me more. Well, that person got fired. So in my mind, the smart thing to do is to say, I will do what you want me to do. I work during these hours. This is what I'm going to do. And after you've been doing it for a while, then you go to them and say, you know what? I would, if you're happy with what I've been doing and you think I'm, in, I feel like I'm doing a good job. What about giving me some more money? Yeah. But, well, you have to achieve it, as you were saying. Exactly. You have to achieve I, it. I, I, I was, I was given a, a workshop this morning and we were talking about uh, a, a World Cup game between uh, Uruguay and Ghana. 
at the very last minute, of, the game was to end two minutes, two minutes to end the game. And Luis Suarez, who was uh, the guy who has to, to make the goals, not to stop the goals, stop a goal. And, and the people says, what is Luis Suarez doing on the, on, uh, as a goalkeeper? If, if he doesn't, if, if that's not his position. No, but if he is, very, he is very accountable. He wanted to win the game. So he, he will do everything to help the team win the game. And because he stopped the, 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 the ball with his hands, he was, he, he was a, how do you say, fired from the game. He was because, disqualified from the game, yeah. Yeah, but when the, game, the, the guy from Ghana threw the penalty, he threw out the, the ball from the, from the goalkeeper, from the, from the, how do you call that? Uh, the well, goalkeeper for, from the arena? No, 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 where, where you have to make the goal. Yeah, the, the, net, the net. Yeah, well, so it's very interesting. So what he did helped the team not just to stop the goal, but the other team didn't make the goal, so your wife won. Because he did, the, he made the extra mile. Well, yeah, but 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 to your goal, I mean, the extra mile is what makes you what sets you apart from somebody else. And, exactly. and the extra mile is volunteering, doing extra work. Uh, when you're done with your work, don't just sit around and say, I'm done with my work. Go go look for more. Right. That's that's really the issue. Right. Yes. And that's what an accountable person does. If, if I see a, a paper thrown on the street and I'm walking. I can I can take it, pick it up, and put it in the basket, even though I, I didn't throw it. That's been accountable as a citizen. Well, I I agree a hundred percent with you. I mean, I think that's what happens too often. Two people say, "Well, this is just my job. I'm not going to do anything more because I'm not going to make waves." And actually, I've talked to some people. One of my friends is a uh, has about 600 people that report to him in, in Canada. He works for a, a large bank in Canada. And he says, you are either moving up or moving out. <laughs> we don't want people who are complacent and who plan to stay there for 30 years and not advance because that prevents other people who are ambitious from, from advancing. So it falls in line with what you're saying. You know, as long as you're doing the extra, you're going to keep moving. And if yeah. not, you're moving out. And, and uh, what I'm, I'm always saying that uh, small things can make big changes. I know that sounds very regular. Everybody will say that, but I have tried it. I have worked for 40, over 40 years in international companies, national companies, in the government, in the private sector. So I, I, I have a lot of experience. I have given... Uh, workshops in over uh, different five, 500 different companies in 22 countries. So we have to have a culture in, inside the company that make small, that try to make small changes, uh, small improvements every day. That's why I don't lo love ISOs. You don't love what? ISOs? 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 Yes. The things that are, they say like if you you that you have to do the same thing every day, so well, okay. I prefer kaisen as the Japanese says. No, you have to improve every day. You have to you have to prove yourself every single day. Yeah. Now, something that's interesting, and I like the metaphor that you use this in your book. It's the unaccountability star, <laughs> and I I really think it's a really effective way to 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 talk about what it is that that keeps people from progressing let's talk a little bit about the accountability star the first one is ignore right yeah the top yeah. of the star is ignore and ignore is i don't know what to do nobody has told me what, what to achieve how can i be accountable of something that i don't know i ignore it so if you ignore it you that's the only one that you can you can uh, you can use as as as, a, as an excuse and as an argument. Say 
nobody has told me what to do. What, when, you, why I'm saying that you are not accountable in that case? Because you have to ask for it. Is it what, what are we, what do we not, do we need to achieve? I, I, I ask the person who, who cleans in, in, a, in a company, what's your work? In, if the people always tell me, I'm cleaning, I say, well, the, the, that person is not motivated. That person doesn't understand what to do in this company. We have to teach him or her that what she or he has to achieve is much bigger than just cleaning. Well, it's like I will... I remember when I first started in Argentina, um, we were using the services of this lady and I asked her, what does she do? She says, well, your necessity is my job. Wow. So when you're asked, what, 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 what do you do for, for work? Well, right now I clean floors, but I do whatever they tell me to do. Hmm. Mm -hmm. yep. and, and, and even the, with a simple example of the person cleaning the floors, I mean, he's got to be, or she has to be the best at it, right? Because yeah, the only but, way you're going to know it is, is to excel at that, right? Yeah, and, and understand why she, she or he is cleaning. Exactly. Understand why the importance of it. I because, look at ignore as also letting opportunity go by and not taking it. Because some, some people ignore things because they're afraid to jump into it. So, so... You, you know, it's like, you know, buying the lottery, winning the lottery, you have to buy the ticket. Okay. <laughs> yeah, of course. So, so don't ignore the opportunity because oftentimes I think people ignore the opportunity because they don't feel the confidence to go through it. Yeah, I, that, exactly. That's what's happened, for example, in leadership. I, I, I do believe totally that nobody is born as a leader. All leaders are, are done. You, you have to to earn to be leader. You have to, to learn a lot of things to, to be leader, but you will have a lot of opportunities in your life to be leader. And a lot of people ignore them. Well, they ignore them because they're afraid of failing. Of course, that, they, they don't want the to be leaders. They ignore. Well, we, we kind of talked a little bit about it, the second star, which was denial. Uh, but That's denial kind of has another, another thing that denial is, I didn't, I didn't went to that meeting, I didn't receive that email. Uh, my boss didn't tell me that. No, that is denied. Even though someone told you so, you are saying no. I I, I don't recall it. Well, so I, I'm thinking denial is that you are. You, I also think that you're afraid to do it. You know, your denial is. Um, I don't deserve that opportunity or somebody else is keeping me from that opportunity. Well, or, or sometimes I say, well, I don't recall that you say that the goal that we have to do to, to have this year is to sell 200,000 or 200 million. Um, I understood a lot, a, another, uh, another number. No, the, we, we did say that the number that we have to achieve this year is 200. Exactly. I just went, last, year, last week I was giving a, a seminar a workshop and there was a huge discussion in the, within the group, 30 people, because they're, they're, uh, we're in August and they, are, they were discussing the number for the, this year. I don't believe it. So that's ignoring. I, I, told, I told the leader of the company, the, the CEO, take away, they have this beautiful um, frame, vision and mission uh, 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 hanging on, on all, all the walls in the company. Say, take them away and put the objectives of, the, of this year. That's important issue this year. Well, the third star is using excuses. Uh, let's, let's talk about that at the very end. Okay, then we'll go on to the other star, blame. Blame can't is be using excuses too, but yeah. Yes, it's beautiful. If you are religious, what do you say? It was God's will. It's, it's exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it was God's will. 
uh, or if you if you don't if you don't like the politician in turn, you say, well, the president or the prime minister of the the competition, or you blame the other department or other direction or vice president, whatever. You are blaming others. Yeah, or the devil made me do it. It was yeah. the devil. He used to be a comedian in the U.S., Flip Wilson. The devil made me do it. I didn't want to do it. It was the devil. Okay, exactly. The drugs, the 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 alcohol. The alcohol was the drugs, right? Yeah. Well, and, and so, I mean, blaming is different than, in a sense, making excuses, but saying somebody else is at fault for your lack of success. Yeah. And I, I'm a big believer that there may be people who will try to bring you down, who will create the obstacles, but ultimately your success is determined by your drive and determination. So you don't give them an excuse. I was um, a, a wrestler in college and, 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 and I did competitive judo, competing okay. on a national level. And I've always said, if I can't pin them, if I can't flip them to the matches over with, I have two opponents. My opponent, I'm fighting, and the referee. <laughs> because now I put it in the hands of the referee because I did not execute a move. Okay. Uh, remember, you we talked about that uh, some days ago, uh, Rudy, Rudy. Yeah. When when a lawyer lost a case, what does he say or what does she say? It was the judge. The judge. It's a beautiful to blame the judge. The other one is the, the fourth one is rational, uh, rationalized. What, yeah, what rationalized. Do I mean by yeah, rationalized. What what is that? That you um, find is how um, things to say about why you didn't do it. Ah, uh, the competition did did that, or uh, we we didn't have the information on time. Um, because this or that, because it, I, I, I crashed because it was raining. No, you didn't crash because it was raining. You crashed because you didn't take into accountability that was raining, so that you have to be more in control of your car. It's but I look at, yeah, I look at rationalization, Octavio, in a little bit different sense, okay? When I look at rationalization, I look at people justifying why they didn't succeed. And they'll say, well, I really didn't want it anyway, okay? Uh, you know, well, yeah, that's okay, but I didn't, really didn't want that, and that's why, you know? Like when somebody says, I want to go to law school, you know, and they get Fs, and they say, yeah, I really didn't want to go. You know, <laughs> well, obviously, you didn't want to go if all you got were Fs, right? No, because if you, if you are not accepted, in, in a university, you will say, well, I wasn't, no, that, that university wasn't my first option. I, I remember having a call with my niece, um, my sister's daughter, who, since she was nine, wanted to be a doctor. Okay. And she's now 22, and she calls me about wanting to be a lawyer. Yeah. I said, well, what happened to this thing in medicine? Well, you know, it's I, I want to have a family. I want to have kids and being a doctor, you know, might interfere with that. I said, sweetheart, don't make excuses. Either you want to be a doctor or not, because if you're going to be a doctor, you can make the family situation work. Right. But don't use that as an excuse. And so that's how I see rationalization. People say, well, you know what? Yeah, it's just as well. Yeah. Right? Well. It's as, as big as you want to uh, use it. And the last one that you, you asked about it, using excuses is in, I made is that, that one for the Latin American people, mostly. Or I'm being Mexican. I know that people will invent, will uh, have use all their capabilities to invent or to innovate or say something or do something, not to do their things. To, to, to be accountable. So I, I decided to use this one that probably it doesn't sound very robust in terms of methodology, but it helps me say, if you use any excuse, any argument, you are you are not an accountable, uh, accountable person. Well, there's always reasons, you know, for oh, yes. failures, okay? For example, if you look at the pandemic, 
a number of businesses went under because, you know, people couldn't go to restaurants and the yeah. carryouts weren't enough to get them. I mean, even in La Zona Roja in Mexico, where I go to, my favorite restaurant closed. I mean, I, I still cry about that. You know, I'd go there. They even had a little ashtray for my cigars with my name on it. And every time I walked by, I said, oh, my God, my favorite place is closed. But but there are things that will set you back. I think what you have to be careful is that those excuses do not keep you from moving forward. You know, exactly. it's just a setback. It's just a setback, right? Exactly, Rudy. A lot of companies, well, some, com some companies did have to have some help. But I think that being what, what happened to us in the year 2020, you, you have to say, well, what, can I, what else can I do? What do I do? This is not working. This is uh, being longer than what I was expecting. What do I do? Probably close a restaurant. We're still making the, the food and taking it to, to homes. Or I will give uh, classes as a, as, a, as a chef, wherever. I reinvent myself. Exactly. Oh. If you, yeah, if, yeah, in the case of the restaurant, my favorite restaurant all in Mexico, I'm still bummed out about it, okay? If, if, if you use that as an excuse to stop, then yes, that's your excuse. But that's just an obstacle. You still continue with the restaurant. Yes. It's the same thing in some other form, maybe, but not the form. And so that leads I, me to, yeah, to one of your other things in the book is uh, the, the, the goal doesn't change, but the journey does. In other words, changing the goal doesn't change the plan. Yes, exactly. And for example, year 2000, 2020, for me, uh, as, a, as, a, as a consultant, as a uh, facilitator, a speaker, or whatever, it was a very complicated year because you you used to be given lectures or given workshops or whatever on on, uh, on a presence uh, format, traveling all around Mexico, or all around Latin America, even the U.S. So I have to reinvent myself. So I I bought Zoom, I learned Zoom, I took a lot of lessons from uh, from Google how to do, to give good lectures, uh, what to have to do this or that. Have, have. So I reinvent myself and was the second best year of my uh, of right. me as a speaker in, in, in 20 something years. Well, well, you bring up a very good point, okay? Because the fact that you and I are having this conversation on Zoom and I don't have to be in Mexico City in a studio is something yeah. that's incredible. So from adversity, can come more opportunities. So let, let's just take your role. You are a professional trainer. You're a coach. You're an executive trainer. You help people with accountability. And up until the pandemic, mostly you did that in person. Yes. But now you're able to do it through Zoom, which can expand your market more. So now, you don't, for example, you don't have to make a 20-hour flight to China or a 30 some hour flight to Australia to do it. At the drop of a hat, you can be in five countries making five different presentations, which is more opportunities. And that's what I did. Exactly. I went, I went to clients like Walmart and said, well, I am ready to give a lecture or to give a workshop in all Latin America at the same time. And I did so. So I had people from seven countries from uh, Walmart, Mexico, and Central America. Given uh, I have, I was giving them lecture to to different people in seven different countries at the same time. In the other, in the other cases, you were saying I ha I have to travel to six different countries. Yeah, and and I I see this now for me because I, um, for example, Friday I attend the hearing in Anguilla through Zoom. Mm -hmm. I would have to go there. And now I'm just going to sit in my chair and, and watch it. So it's, cre it's created more opportunity. I, I think that uh, when, pe when people look at the negative, for example, in the case of the restaurant or a case of people talking, you know, physically to people, you and I have had to learn a new skill set to adapt. So we could have used the pandemic as an excuse, right? We could have said, 
that's our excuse but we go beyond that and then we try to do something to say well how are we going to benefit uh, you, you you know what the the phoenix the bird is right it's a, the 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 bird that crashes and burns and rises from the ashes yes, yes, yes that's 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 you know what i see you know when you crash and burn you're like the phoenix that have to reinvent yourself right and and, and in in execution that's what i spend is spend the more the more time when i do the workshop and in the book there are a lot of pages about that what i say is you have to learn how to treat the, the, the persons who is in front of you. So instead of trying to sell your product every time, understand your client better, then you can sell much more than what you are actually selling or, or what you were uh, trying to sell at the, at the, uh, at the beginning. So I, I try to change the paradox of saying, treat others, they, they will, they have always told us, treat the others like you want to be treated. And I said, that's a stupidity today. <laughs> okay. I don't know, when, when it was written, and it's on the Bible, uh, it's probably, it was right. I don't want to discuss that, and I'm a sociologist, and I'm a theologist, or whatever, sociologist, uh -huh. or archaeologist, or whatever. Yeah. What I what I I understand the world of today. And today you have to treat the others like they want to be treated. Oh, exactly, exactly. B because it's it's all about listening. Of course. It's all about knowing what you're you and I've had conversations about this before. It's about listening. It's treat your client the way they want to be treated because there's a, another expression, Octavio, is the golden rule. He who has the gold makes the rules, okay? If your client is the one paying you, then you want to treat him how he wants to be treated, right? Because that's your job. Exactly. But a lot of companies and a lot of persons does, don't, doesn't understand that. And that's why they, they, want, they go bankruptcy or they broke. So because the question they don't, I, huh? Go ahead. That's go ahead. happened to well, Kodak, BlackBerry, uh, Blockbuster. Three examples of what companies that did. Nokia didn't understand their clients. Well, I don't. You know why? Here's. I. I think I agree with you, but I would add a different dimension to that. They didn't project. Kodak didn't see the future of digital because they thought they had the market. BlackBerry thought. Our security is what's going to keep us through. In the meantime, Steve Jobs has revolutionized, you know, how we use the phone, right? And Blockbuster didn't anticipate the internet. But you know. Rudy, the people from Netflix offered Netflix to Blockbuster and they didn't want it to buy it. They didn't want it to buy it. Exactly, exactly. And it was on their 50 million US. It's Unbelievable. I, I remember Blockbuster because I, I had a client who was an airplane broker yeah. and he had an office in, in Florida where Blockbuster had these G5 airplanes, all from renting videos, you know. So, yeah. yeah and now, you know, well, now my brother has 22 uh, Blockbusters in Mexico and they have to close it. Yeah, it, it, it's crazy. But, you know, the, the thing about it is it's not anticipating the market, not anticipating what's going to happen you you say also say something in your book about do you want to be the one known to make excuses or do you want to be the one that gets results exactly who are you who are you who are you who are you and uh, everybody says when I, i'm giving a lecture or when i'm giving a workshop i say no i am the one giving results i'm gonna ask your wife about it or i'm gonna ask your boss about it <laughs> uh think uh very closely about that question and tell me the truth. Do you always try to get results or you are still do, giving excuses? And um, well, Results are subjective, okay? Well, the results uh, are, are, are subjective sometimes, but I, I think you want to be known for somebody that gets results, but you have to get results constantly. You can't just get one result no. And then think, oh, I'm going to rest my career on that. No, uh, it's like playing in, in, in Wimbledon or the U.S. Open. And you mm -hmm. start, you have to win one game. And then the next round, 
and the uh -huh. next the next round and the next round not not you are if, if you win the first game you are not winning you you are not gonna get the u.s open you are not gonna be the champion of the u.s open you have to win eight or seven games to be the u.s uh open champion well even and that's in my world exactly you, the life even in my world when you win again when you win a case okay that was last week what are you doing this week or or are next you, are another you client? Next case or, or huh? you win or you win a case for one client you need to win the case for the other client exactly for many clients exactly exactly so, so octavio what i mean what advice would you give to somebody well, well let me start this over again there are huge as you and i have also discussed cultural difference between the mexican and the person living in the u.s yeah what would you do different in the u.s that you you would don't do and you wouldn't do in Mexico because it's two totally different cultures. You know, you and I talked about people who signed up for the seminar. You said, well, you know, Mexicans will sign up later. Um, you know, Americans tend to be more punctual. That's the stereotype. OK, yeah. But what would be different about your advice uh, between giving it to U.S. individuals and Mexican individuals? Well, the first uh, thing we already talk about when, uh, when in one of the lectures that we receive in Latin American Speaker Association, but you and me are members. Uh, I heard from a guy, I don't remember his name. He says, if you're a speaker or if you're a consultant or facilitator or whatever, your business is not selling books. And I learned that for the US market. So what I'm doing is not selling, my, my business is not selling books. And that's why I'm giving the books in very inexpensive, because what I want to do is read the book. And as you were saying at the very beginning of this uh, conversation, that I'm thank you, very thankful to you once again, Rudy, is um, if you want to know more about it, talk to me. You already read the book, but you there are a lot of things that you won't find on the book because the only way to find it is to have this conversation as, as we are having this. And that's a, a, a very different approach than what I did in Mexico. You know, it's, it's funny. I just had a conversation today about with some Mexican lawyers about doing a webinar or doing something. And they said, well, we don't want to teach our competitors how to do it. And I, and I take the position, you teach everybody how to do it. Because what ends up happening is you get, you're the expert at that point. Nobody's going to become an expert reading your book. So giving it away or selling it at a low price doesn't, doesn't make things worse for you. In fact, it makes it better because it makes them want to learn more. And, and a lot of people thing. will mm -hmm. know that I, I am an expert in, on accountability. Well, and that's I what don't I'm, know trying what I'm to an expert keep. on yet, but hopefully one day when I grow up, I, you know, I want to be Octavia when I grow up. Okay. Uh -huh. so. Yeah, sure. <laughs> So, Octavia, I got to ask you, OK, because one of the rules in doing a Zoom is having a very simple background and your background. Can you tell us the significance of those design? I know you're an art collector, right? Yes. And in a lot of your material, you have those what we call the little muñequitos there. Right. Tell us briefly the significance of those. Yeah, well, this is a Daruma. Daruma is a Japanese doll like this one. When you bought when you buy this doll. You buy it with no eyes, as you see. And when you begin a project or you begin, a, you, you want to achieve a, a, a big uh, objective or whatever, then you, no, this is not, this is not the one I, I wanted to choose, this one. You put this one, one, one eye and you won't be able to paint the other eye until you achieve the thing. And if you, this is a, a Japanese tradition. So the big companies, well, the companies and the persons who have this at, at the beginning of the year or at the beginning of a, a, a big project. So if you achieve it, then you have, you have the two eyes. <laughs> so what's so that, shows your, that shows your progress. Exactly. So what, what happens every morning for me when I see this? This is the, the, the 22. What do I see? 
You see, you but got I, one more thing to do. It, uh, Lord, uh, more, 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 more things to do. So that's why I brought this Daruma to this uh, conversation with you. This is my launching of the English book. Okay. So what I'm gonna, so what I'm gonna do is uh, draw the first eye of this Daruma. And until I achieve some, the number I want to do to get uh, as a, of selling books or be a Kindle of when I'm printed, uh, I'll print it. I I can put the other. Eye. So I want to have uh, I want to put it in here with me. So I know and I have another Daruma open. <laughs> so your book is now available on Kindle. It's to go to the Kindle store. And you can download it, right? Yep. And you've also got your website. Uh, what's in your website again? It's Octavio. Uh, www.octavioaguilar.com. And okay. it's in and Spanish or in English also. Yeah, I saw the little button where you can click it into English. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you've got a great video on there. So to everyone who's listening, uh, we have, we're broadcasting live on LinkedIn, on YouTube, and Twitter in three mediums and um, please reach out to Octavio. He's on LinkedIn, he's connected to me. Um, he's an excellent speaker. I've heard him in other situations and I really think he's onto something with this make it simple in the United States because that's always been my belief. Make it simple, don't ever analyze to death. I call it analysis by paralysis yes of course yeah where, yeah. Pe awesome. where people they spend their whole time analyzing it and don't ever make a decision and by then the facts change and you have to start analyzing all over again now it's another way of saying it but and i agree totally with you Rudy. is it's better to 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 say perdon than to ask for permission do yeah, it better to ask for forgiveness and for permission exactly. yeah so do it yeah, and that that's a good thing we can close with is I, I the the if if I could take one word to describe your book, okay, it would be being proactive. Everything that you suggest in your book, it's about being proactive. It's not about sitting back. It's about constantly moving forward one step at a time. You you like the Japanese and. I like the Chinese uh, <laughs> proverbs. Uh, the journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. Exactly. Exactly. And and Thomas Edison, he said, I didn't fail 10,000 times. I just figured out 10,000 times why something didn't work. A Mexican guy, huh? You know that? Edison? Yeah, he, he, he was born in Mexico. Okay, to U.S. parents? Yes. Well, that's why he was so brilliant, because he was born in Mexico, right? <laughs> of course, Rudy, you know it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, everybody, uh, for uh, for appearing and, and listening. Uh, it was a great conversation. And I think what we'll do, Octavio, when your book starts to sell more, we'll yeah. get on and, and, and talk some more. And when you start doing version two of your book, we'll we'll, we'll talk again. Thank you very much, Rudy, and thank you everyone for being here. I'm very excited to be, uh, I will be in September in New York giving my first uh, lecture in, in English for, about the book. I just did it in, in Los Angeles. Uh, now I'm gonna do it in New York. I'm very happy about it. Sounds good. Take care, my friend. Thank, thank you Thank you so very much. much. Have a good night. Bye. Bye. Okay, I stopped recording. Okay. Ya, ya dejé de grabar. Yes. And you, you have to stop LinkedIn or whatever? Yeah, I've been monitoring it on LinkedIn. Hold on.